Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Box on Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Silentium PC F240 ARGB. Is it any good? Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the 240 mil all-in-one CLC cooler from Silentium PC. This is the Navis F240 ARGB, which is supremely silent. There is some serious witchcraft going on in the design of this, which makes it just ridiculously quiet. It's actually quite scary. You don't even realize that the pump is actually functioning, but believe me, it is, and it does a particularly good job. Now, in today's video, we'll be comparing it in contrast to one of the best air coolers on the market, especially for the price, this is Silentium PC's Fortis 5 ARGB, which does a spectacularly good job and is within a kind of a whiskers breadth of being pretty much a DH15 competitor. So which one's gonna be best for you? Do you have the room for a large air cooler or do you wanna go with the stylish looks of a water cooler? Well, that's gonna be down to you, but if you wanna know what the temperatures are like, Keep watching and you'll find out towards the end of the video. So let's start off with an unboxing and an overview of the product itself. So as you can see straight away from the packaging, you can see exactly what it is. This is a 240mm AIO radiator with a splash of addressable RGB, thanks to the two Fluctus 120mm ARGB fans on the front. Rotational speeds of those between 300 and 1800 RPM, so can get really nice and quiet if you want to, or can be quite aggressive if you push them hard, although realistically, you don't need to. Something which is actually quite unusual on this is the new pump block design. It's got a ceramic bearing in there and keeps it super, super quiet. And also all the fixtures and fittings needed to actually fit it are included straight on the package itself. With this entire design, what they've gone is with simplicity and ease of use. And as we go through the unboxing, you'll look at some of the wiring and all of the features. And yeah, it is a very easy unit to install. If you do want to see a separate video on how to install this on an AM4 platform, there is an individual video which we've done on that, which you can check out from the links below. On the back of the box, we've got some of the specifications. So if you want to see those in greater detail, please feel free to pause the video right now. Or you can, of course, if you want to check out the details from the video description, there are full links to the Silentium PC website. You can check out the various options. There is actually options of this as well. So if uh, maybe the ARGB isn't quite to your liking, then there is actually a non-RGB version of this, but if you do want to go a little bit further with RGB, there's a pro version of this, which actually has addressable RGB on the pump head as well. So plenty of options out there for those of you that want it. On the other side of the box, then there is some information about the sizes of the pump and all that kind of stuff. You will need 275 millimeters of space in order to fit the radiator in either the front top or wherever you choose to do it. This should fit pretty well in most cases on the market, even some of the smaller ITX ones, they do seem to be improving that as time goes on, but micro ATX and ATX form factors, you shouldn't have any problems at all. So let's go through and see what we actually get inside the box. So there is the radiator itself, which we'll get out shortly. We've got our accessories bag, and actually there isn't a great deal, but there are some super handy things in there, but we'll go through that in more detail shortly. There is, as you'd expect, an instruction guide, although you can, if you want to, you can just scan the QR codes and check it out from there. It's all laid out very nicely in uh, a slightly uprated version of IKEA instructions. So it's very nice and clear, tells you exactly what goes where, gives you very good layouts of actually how all the wiring works, all that kind of stuff. Again, this has been designed to make insulation as simple and as easy as possible. And of course we get the radiator and pump head assembly itself. So everything as it comes out of the box is essentially pretty much ready to go. There isn't a great deal you need to do. Something which I have done, which uh, you will need to do for yourselves, is to connect up this extension PWM cable. So this is for going to the CPU fan header. They've done a really good job with this actually. It's all pre-wired and all cable managed. So all you need to do when you actually get it is plug this into the end and essentially that is it. There isn't a great deal more to do for the fans themselves. That is included in the packaging. The other thing you'll need to do is to connect up your addressable RGB. These are actually really good. They have got daisy chain connections on them. So all you'll need to do, if you've only got one header on your board or you don't have a hub, then just pull that off the end of there and then you can plug that into the end. So this is using the standard three pin, five volt addressable RGB compatible with MSI, ASRock, ASUS, Gigabyte, etc., etc. That basically terminates into one header. So that can be plugged straight into the motherboard. So in terms of actually connectivity for the fans themselves, very straightforward, very simple to do. When it comes to the pump head, it's actually ingenious what they've done. So the pump head itself has a P2 
PWM style connection, which goes to your motherboard, which goes to your pump fan header or one of your chassis fan headers, which is then converted to pump fan. Fully PWM controlled, so you can set it to as high or as low as you want to, or set a curve, that sort of thing. Realistically, you can set this to 100% and you won't even notice it. It's absolutely silent, it really, really is. I cannot convey enough how quiet this actually is. You don't hear the sound of any water moving, no bubbles, no nothing. It's basically silent. So the only thing which is actually gonna make noise are the fans themselves and the air going through the actual radiator fins, which is absolutely brilliant if you like a silent PC. Powering the pump head, very easy to do. All it requires is a single SATA connection. I actually prefer this because some pumps can draw a little bit extra power. So if you haven't got a specific port on your motherboard, which will give out enough juice, then your power supply obviously will. Looking back at the fans themselves, you can see these are, like I said earlier, these are the Fluctus 120mm ARGB fans. These are really, really good fans, very quiet, and they've got some really nice accents to them as well. So they've got some serrated edges on the blades so they can really cut through the air. Very, very quiet. Again, 300 to 1800 RPMs and anywhere between 1500 and 1800, they do start to get a little bit noisy in terms of because they're physically moving so much air. Anything underneath around about 1500 RPMs, essentially they are silent and no noisier than any other fan in the rest of the PC. Something else which is really cool about this is the actual pipes themselves. Now pipes are generally something we don't tend to get too excited about, but these are really good. They're nicely braided and they've got a kink free design. So even if you have got a very tight chassis and you've got no room at all, you can literally twist these around pretty much wherever you want and they just refuse to kink. So for smaller, Micro ATX and ITX builds, this is actually gonna be really useful. Attention to detail and quality is something that Silentium PC are, uh, to be honest, pretty well known for, and it doesn't stop anywhere on this design. So even down to things like where the pipes actually go into the pump itself, they've got these really nice kind of spring braids, which actually seal off the pipes, keep everything nicely enclosed and stop, obviously, the braiding from fraying, all that kind of stuff but they're just finished in such a nice way. It just really is screaming quality. Something else that screams quality is the actually assemble itself. So you've got a really, really nice, big asymmetric pump head or cold plate. And this is designed so you can mount it in any direction you want to. They do suggest that when you're mounting it that you try and have the pipes mounted towards the rear of your IO shield, but essentially you can mount it any way you want to. Because of the square shape of it, you can mount it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, however you see fit. The really nice part is the fact that all the mounting systems are actually built in already. So you don't need to worry about trying to find the right adapter or the right plate or the right accessory to go with your pump. Literally, they're all there ready to go. So this is gonna fit AM4 straight away, no problems at all. Doesn't fit AM3 sadly, but I don't think many people are tending to use that platform now. On the Intel side of things, we're supported LGA 1700, LGA 1200, the 11.5 X range, and also it will fit the 2000 series as well. So you've got a really nice wide spectrum of what this will physically fit. Being the fact that AM4 is supposedly gonna be the same fittings as AM5, if you do use this as an investment now, you should be able to use this with AM5 processors, obviously, depending on what the TDPs are like on those when they come out, that may change things slightly, but pretty much as it goes, this is gonna be investment and will work with pretty much all sockets and future ones. Something else of note, which uh, Silentium PC will probably not appreciate me saying, but I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't, and that is the fact there is a sticker on the top of the radiator, although there isn't now, because I've kind of removed it. It does say, please do not remove. Now, obviously, that is like a big red button saying do not press, so I had to see what was underneath it, and it actually is a fill screw. Now, this isn't officially a thing, so, it is under warranty, so you do get a three-year warranty with this, and obviously depending on where you live in the world, your warranty may be slightly different. Check out the links below. But if for some reason you do find that the fluid level is getting low or you're starting to hear bubbles in the system, it's really nice and reassuring to know that there is actually a normal fill screw there. So if you do want to actually refill the fluid, which you shouldn't, please don't. It's not supported and it will invalidate your warranty but certainly after your warranty has expired, if you do get to the point where your fluid is low, you could potentially refill it. So just thought I'd make you aware of all that. Okay, so let's take a look at the accessories and the fitting kit. So it's actually pretty straightforward. There isn't a great deal that you need. So you've got four of these, which are the kind of mounting pillars with the black thumb screw or kind of knurled edge on them. Those are used for all the Intel sockets and also AM4. Other than the 2000 series on Intel, if you're using the Intel 2000 series, then you use these ones. So they have made them so they look deliberately completely different. So there's no easy way to mix them up. 
If you're using the Intel sockets, you use the backplate, which is included. Again, LJ1700, 1200, and 11.5X, all supported from that. And there's a rubberized section to keep it isolated so it doesn't short circuit on the motherboard. Made of a very nice solid metal, so that's always nice to see. You do also get some Pactum PT3 compound, 1.5 grams in there, which actually is quite generous. Generally, most manufacturers give you a very, very small amount of thermal compound, but they do give you a 1.5 gram tube, which is excellent. There's eight mounting screws to mount the radiator physically to the frame of your PC. There is a small spanner. Now this is actually quite useful for the mountings. So there is actually like a hex nut on there. So if for some reason you suffer with dexterity, that kind of thing, and you can't really get enough pressure on to tighten them up, then you can use the included spanner and just give it a little bit of extra torque. Very nice. Once that's done, you can put on the tensioning springs and also there are thumb screws on the top. Again, very simple, straightforward mounting method, same method, same screw, same springs for both Intel and AM4. So it's very difficult to get anything wrong. Another thing which is hard to get wrong is gonna be the addressable RGB lighting. So as we've seen from earlier in the video, very simple, just plug it into a three pin five volt header on your motherboard. But if for some reason you don't have that on your motherboard, then they do include the nano controller. So this is a tiny controller. On the end there, you've got the three pin addressable RGB header, which you plug in from the fans themselves into this. This is powered by a SATA connection, which is always nice to see, and it is controlled from a remote switch. So you can use your case's reset switch and just repurpose it, plug in the reset switch into there, press the button, hold it, and you can cycle through the various color options of which there's about 12, including some really nice rainbow effects and some color fades. Now all of this wouldn't be any good if the uh, cooler was actually not very good at what it should do. So let's take a look at some of the test results. We have been testing today using our Ryzen 9 3900X, obviously using the F240 versus the Fortis 5, which is a really, really good cooler. And that is actually what I've been using as my daily driver very recently up until receiving this. So it's actually really easy for me to see any of those subtle differences. So first of all, let's look at the charts. Now what I've done is with the fan curves, my usual fan curve is 20% at 20 degrees, 40% at 40 degrees, 60% at 60 degrees, and at 70 degrees, 100%. So it's a gradual curve. I don't like my PC to get over 70 degrees if I can possibly help it, which isn't always easily done, especially with the ambient temperatures rising in the UK as they are at the moment. We're currently in an ambient room of around about 26 degrees, so it's getting a little bit warm here. I think it's going to be a good reflection for those of you around the world. So we have tested with those two, so the PWM fan curve and also a 100%. So just wanted to see if it actually makes much difference running it at completely 100% all the time, whether or not it is worthwhile doing that or whether you actually need to. So first of all, looking at the results. So this is with the Fortis 5. So we've got a CPU low temperature in the normal fan range of 38.3 degrees and a high point of 72.4. Running this fan at 100%, we did drop a couple of degrees, so the low of 36.1 and a high of 70.5. So realistically there, we've dropped around about two degrees, which kind of is making some sense. Running the fans at 100% all the time, you will see some benefits in that, but not a great deal. And obviously there is gonna be that increase in noise. Moving over to the Navis, so with the 240, now straight away, I can tell you, you don't need to run it 100% all the time. It's basically pointless, but here are the results anyway. So the normal temperature, so this is the PWM control, we're looking at a CPU low of 35.3, so already dropping about three degrees there. And the highest temperature recorded was 69.8 degrees. So again, about three degrees difference there. Moving over to running it at 100%, which again is absolutely pointless, there's no need to whatsoever. On the idle temperatures, we did on the lows drop very, very slightly. So we got down to 34.6 degrees and the high temperature was exactly the same, 69.8. So yeah, it's basically doing exactly what it should do, whether you've got it set to PWM or set it to 100%. So you're probably wondering, how does that reflect in actual scoring? So let's take a look at the Cinebench score runs. So with the Fortis 5 running in the PWM mode, we've got 18.388. With it running at 100%, we had 18448. So a very, very small difference there, basically a run to runs variant error. We did get a little bit of improvement using the Navis F240 ARGB. So we've got 18.455 with the PWM run and 18.456 with it set to 100%. So literally one point difference, absolutely no point running it at 100% all the time. So you can enjoy the silence. So there you go. There is the Silentium PC Navis F240 ARGB. 
does pretty much exactly what it says on the tin. It's a very good cooler, works very well, very quiet. The silence is one of those weird things. It is almost eerie how quiet it is, especially down to that newly constructed ceramic bearing pump. It is ridiculously quiet. You don't hear any noise from the pump whatsoever, no pump whine. Um, when it ramps up or ramps down, you don't know it's happening at all. You don't hear any fluid in the system at all. And actually even just shaking the radiator, there's none of that kind of telltale sloshing around which you'd normally get. So they've done a particularly good job in making sure that there's no air in there whatsoever, or at least none that is actually detectable by the human ear. Design wise, I think they've done really well making it relatively plain when it comes to the actual pump head itself. You do have a little bit of a brushed accent there looking like brushed aluminium and you do have a very discreet Silentium PC logo slap bang in the middle there. The addressable RGB works as it should do. It's very nice, very bright, very vivid and the fans themselves work again exactly as you'd expect from a high quality fan. So we should really talk about pricing here. Pricing at the moment is all over the place. Um, at the moment, this is retailing for somewhere in the region of about £75. Again, I will put links in the video description of where you can pick it up from. Yeah, prices are fluctuating, so you are investing a little bit more. You can obviously get cheaper AIO coolers, but generally, even the ones I've tested, even things from what would be considered possibly one of the best ones on the market, the Arctic one, it does get a little bit noisy. You can hear the pump fan. There is a little bit of wind from it now and then, and you can definitely hear water sloshing around every now and then, especially if you move the case. Whereas with this, Total silence and realistically you don't even know it's on unless it is under extreme loads when those fans are pushing an absolute ton of air. So overall, yep, I think they've done a fantastic job again. Well done Silentium PC, definitely highly recommended. But what I think isn't important, what you think is. So let us know what you think about this one in the comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.